On January 8, 2005, the USS San Francisco, a Los Angeles-class nuclear attack submarine was traveling at its maximum speed of 38 miles an hour at a depth of 525 feet. While transiting the Caroline Islands mountain chain, the submarine came to an abrupt and unexpected halt. There was a shudder and then a tremendous noise. Men throughout the ship were thrown from their stations against their surroundings. In an instant, many suffered bruises, broken bones, and fractures. 98 crewmen were injured and machinist's mate Joseph Allen Ashley, a 24-years brave sailor, died from head injuries on January 9. It was 364 nautical miles southeast of Guam where the submarine collided with an undersea mountain. Despite their injuries and not having any idea what had just happened, the captain and his crew rushed to surface the boat. The crew threw the emergency blow activator, known as the chicken switch, that immediately blast compressed air into the submarine's ballast tanks. Unknown to the crew, the impact of the explosion had punched huge holes in the forward ballast tanks. The submarine was supposed to immediately rise but it was an agonizing 30 seconds before the submarine began to surface. Surprisingly, USS San Francisco's inner hull was intact, also its MK-48 torpedoes and Tomahawk cruise missiles were unharmed and remarkably, its nuclear reactor was completely undamaged. All alone in the Pacific, the submarine began the long trip back to Guam, and about 30 hours later, the submarine limped back into Opera Harbor. Later, an investigation revealed the submarine had crashed into a seamount, rising 6,500 feet from the ocean floor. The ship's crew were not using the most up-to-date charts to plot their course. The chart used by the USS San Francisco's crew was prepared by the Defense Mapping Agency in 1989. With the cessation of the Cold War, the crash site area was not a high priority for mapping, and that priority had instead been given to the Middle East region to support the global war on terror. The Navy's charts were not updated with the new data. The latest charts did indicate the mountain though, and the commander should have had the latest charts. After repairs to ensure hull integrity, San Francisco traveled under its own power to Puget Sound, Washington. The damaged portion of the boat's bow was removed. The bow of sister submarine USS Honolulu, soon to be retired, was removed and welded onto San Francisco. The submarine rejoined the fleet in 2009 and served for another seven years. In January 2016, it began a two-year conversion that will turn it into a permanently moored training submarine. The heroic actions of the crew were essential to the submarine's survival. Still, how did a submarine survive a high-speed collision with a mountain? In 1963, immediately after the loss of USS Thresher, the Navy instituted the Subsafe program. The goal of the program was to ensure that a submarine's hull would retain pressure in the event of an accident and it would be able to surface. The Navy's nuclear propulsion program made safe, resilient nuclear reactors an absolute top priority. If a submarine's hull remained intact then it was able to surface and the reactor continued to operate the crew had a shot at survival. The USS San Francisco was able to do all three. That it was able to survive was no accident, but rather the culmination of decades of hard work and dedication by the US submarine force.